Hi, welcome to this video Baker, which is all about how to learn Forex trading the right way, learn it quickly and become a consistently profitable Forex trader. Now in today's video, I'm going to go through the 10 things that I wished I'd have known when I first started Forex trading. Now in terms of if I'd known uh, the 10 lessons that I'm going to go through in a moment, I could have saved myself a lot of money, a lot of time and a lot of stress in terms of of my trading. Now, in terms of lessons, um, they are very much to do with avoiding uh, common investment wisdom and avoiding errors that the majority of traders are going to make that are totally avoidable, but you've got to be aware of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and take a look at the 10 lessons in more detail and see what we can learn from them. I've listed them out on the storyboard. So let's go and take a look at them in more detail. Right, just on the GBP monthly chart, first of all, this is just very briefly to see the really big levels. And in terms of a level, one of them, I've already drawn it in, it's this level here. There's the Brexit vote candle, sell off, double bottom of those tails, bounce up to 140, back to the level, and a bounce off this month. And in terms of over here and over here, you had heavy smart money buying into the level, which we can see on our favorite sentiment tool, the COT net traders positions. This is really where a no deal Brexit is kind of in the price, so to speak. And now we've come back up. And I just feel when we go through the sentiment and fundamentals in a moment when we get the daily chart, but um, I just feel now we can see a nice move to the upside and there's a level which is there, that if taken out, um, you should see the pound go higher. Trajectory in there, I've got double trend line. Where could we go to? Uh, we could go up to 140, of course, but uh, I'm a little bit more uh, conservative. I'm going for the 130 level, although we could get a run on. Now, in terms of the risk reward on this trade, your stop does not need to be back behind 120. It's a much tighter uh, risk reward than that, which you'll see when I do the daily levels, but uh, very, very oversold. And uh, I think uh, the pound, you know, now could uh, see some follow through strength and uh, go to the daily chart now, and take a look at what I consider to be a really well-defined level to come in through. So let's go and take a look at it right now. Right, uh, just on the uh, GPUSD daily chart, I'll draw some levels in a moment, but let's look at Brexit news and sentiment behind the charts, because it's obviously very important if you're trading the British pound. Now in terms of point number one, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, um, Parliament has forced him to ask for an extension to Brexit negotiations. Obviously, he wanted to leave at the end of October with a deal or no deal if necessary. He wanted to call a general election, um, but Parliament have thwarted him there as well. So as it stands at the moment, um, it looks like uh, the UK is going to have to ask the EU for an extension to Brexit negotiations. But uh, will France oppose this? Because France have said that they're not happy about another extension being granted. Uh, they won't oppose it at all. They'll, they'll agree to an extension. Yeah, you've got Ireland who want will want an extension. Um, basically, there's a lot at stake. Uh, France will not oppose an extension. Uh, and President Macron has often said, you yeah, know, that he is um, kind of the bad cop against Merkel's good cop in terms of dealing with the UK on Brexit. So the extension will just be given, okay? Um, does Boris Johnson have a plan? What else can he do? Can he basically ignore what Parliament have ordered him to do or asked him to do? Uh, will he go to the Supreme Court? Uh, we don't know, but I personally think this will drag on, uh, or Brexit negotiations will drag on. The longer they drag on, the better it is for the British pound, why? because the economic data is better than forecast. If you look at it, the growth for July came above econo economists' forecast, best growth since January, unemployment uh, as low as it's been since the 1970s, wage inflation firm, 
inflation high in the UK economy. That means that's the U the UK is going to be having the only major central bank, obviously the Bank of England, needing to hike rates this moment in time. If you look at any other major economy, which other central bank is looking to raise rates of a major nation? There isn't one. The UK needs a rate rise. We've got the Bank of England coming up next week. They're not going to be that dovish. Um, they might take the view it's best to get a rate hike in now. They can always cut later on. Um, you know, so the odds favour a rate hike. That's bullish for the GBP. Uh, in terms of the odds of a deal between the EU and the UK, sorry, so being uh, wrong, uh, being done, they remain high. Just go and look at the bookies. Um, they're not very often wrong. Of course, the odds of a deal are high. They're high because both sides need a deal. A lot is made of, you know, the UK will really suffer if there is no deal. Well, the EU will suffer because they do more trade with the UK than the UK does with the EU. I think it's a little bit of media kind of bias, you know. Whenever you get uh, poor data out of the UK, it's to do with Brexit. Poor data out of the Eurozone, never to do with Brexit and get better. Um, it's a little bit bias in my view. So in terms of where we are right now, uh, we've obviously seen the pound, see this exhaustion below 120, that key monthly level. Here's a big blue candle, which in recent years, as I've pointed out, was our entry point, 121.60. We're now up at 123.54. We are at the time I'm doing this video, so a couple of hundred pips in profit. And uh, in the member centre, I did liquidate 50% of that out, bring the stop up, which means I've got some in the bank um, and I can't lose on the second trade. I'll come out with something. Yeah, you know, this is very volatile, so it's good to get something off the table. I might take out the other 50% tomorrow and then look to re enter. Um, see in the morning, but where will I look to re enter? The level is here. It's also a monthly level, 124. It's a round number as well. Round numbers, I keep saying it, but they're very important. A lot of order flow around round numbers. If we break out above the round number, get clear of the turbulence, which is 124.30 in my view, we'll be off to the upside. In terms of support, it's a trajectory. This big blue candle here, we find support on this blue and push off. So there. So big blue, sorry, then we get up, come back to test level, then we're just sitting below resistance and we cleared out these candles here as well. So my view would be for fresh positions, just coming through 124.30, see if she runs. And my own view is, because there's so many speculative shorts in the market, up to 130. So it's a really good risk to reward. If yeah, we don't get through the level and we come back down, um, you won't get triggered. <laughs> okay, I view that as a high odds entry. If we did come down, uh, I would certainly look to buy sterling at lower levels. You know, for me, sterling now is not going to go th much through 120, um, just simply because that's where the hard no deal Brexit is kind of discounted. But yeah, for the purposes of this video, straight through the level, stop back here, see if she runs. she go up to 130, hopefully. Gives a risk reward of near enough forward to one. And I think if we do break out, we gain traction to the upside, nice blue, you'll see the stops get rolled and we'll move higher. So I think it looks a good risk reward trade. Gonna now go, sorry, to a pair that really does interest me, which is GBP CAD, which again has got a nice defined entry point. So let's go and take a look at it. All right, we're on uh, GBP CAD. And in terms of why I like this trade setup, the pound, most oversold major of 2019, obviously. In my view, Canadian dollar is very overbought. It has been the strongest currency in 2019. So it's the most oversold with the most overbought. If you're a pound bull, this one could really give good 
profit against risk or profit potential against risk. Now, just in terms of the chart, briefly below the 160 level here, work our way up, briefly below the 160 level on that candle tail, then reverse back up. And what we're basically seeing is we're just basically holding around this 20 day moving average, the green line. Now, there's a clearly defined entry level for me, which is there. Sorry, I just need to get my line in place. There it is. Sorry, I'm having a problem with my mouse, Matt, as per usual. There we go. Why is that key level? Because it's just right on a round number. You want to get through 163.40 to get rid of round number turbulence or clear of it. And then you can see if she runs. Now, in terms of stop, put trajectory in there. Lines up the 20 day moving average. Then you've got body, the one that reversed back through 160, the body that found support, and the tail that found support there. So that's the risk. And then the profit objectives 170, these are both monthly levels as well. And of course, round numbers 175. Now, what you can do is just let the market or the price action bring you in. If you miss it, and she comes down towards the 160 level again, you can always look to see if the pound basis are out and maybe go long at a lower level. But my own view is if we get through that level, stops will be triggered, then we're up to one, or so hopefully going up to 175. So you've got about three to one to first target, about five to one to second target. So I like it. it's got nice cleanly defined Entry got choppy, sideways action, relatively low volatility, which points to a big move. We think it'll be to the upside. Nice blue through the level, follow through to the upside. Well, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. But yeah, I like it. It's a good, uh, yeah, just restored trade setup. Yeah, if you're wrong, um, the risk against the reward is relatively small in my view. And like I said, you can always pick her up at lower levels if the pound did come back towards the 160 level on strength. Right, let's move to our last pair, which is going to be Euro. GBP. All right, so uh, on Euro GBP uh, daily chart. And in terms of um, the Euro, I think I mentioned it when I was um, talking about GBP USD, I feel UK economy is in better shape uh, than Eurozone. The Eurozone will soon be in recession. The UK will avoid recession. But I think the big driver in this pair could be interest rate differentials because, yeah, already said it, UK, I think, are going to have to hike rates soon. We know the ECB, who meet on Thursday, are probably going to look at cutting rates even more negative and uh, going for money printing or stimulus, which is heavily bearish for the currency. Now, in terms of the meeting we've got coming up from the ECB, it's the last one with Mario Draghi as president. He's going to be replaced by Christian Lagarde. And I pointed this out in videos to do with the euro. She's just in favour of as much stimulus as possible. Um, so, yeah, from an economic standpoint, interest rate outlook favours the GBP. Obviously, we've got Brexit in the equation, but uh, my own view is, um, you know, Chances of a deal are high, and the longer you know, the delay is in place, or they extend the deadline, the more bullish it is for sterling. Now, in terms of this price action, I'm just going to explain something here for new viewers, because a lot of beginners won't do this, but let me just explain what it is. Nice big move up in the euro, nice acceleration up here, and I've sold it on the big red. And then the market gives me uh, a reasonable loss. And a lot of traders, and they get a you know, reasonable size loss, you know, they get a bit annoyed with the pair and they won't come back and trade it again. If you still believe in your view, then you'll always get another bite of the cherry. As long as the logic of what you were wanting to do is still correct, obviously um, sentiment might have gone against you. But uh, you can stick with your view. We did, and we sold back through 92. And it's a nice move down. We've got all the loss back and a little bit more. So never be frightened of coming back in after the market looks makes you look stupid or you know you feel a bit annoyed with the price action. Stand back if your view is still valid you can have another go. Now in terms of the price action we came in at 9180 
And if ever we uh, are really bearish, you want to see a 20 day moving average give way. Once it's given way, if we're bearish, we want it to, well, we want to see if it will provide resistance. So we come through on that red, come off the low, but the blue can't get through, well, it gets through, but can't hold above. Red gets through, can't hold above. Blue touches down with the big red. Sideways, another red touches down, down. So the 20 day moving average, regular viewers know this, find extremely useful. It's not a brick wall, but it gives you an extra idea of where resistance is. It, it only works in strong trends. You don't want to use it in a sideways market. We think this is going to become a strong downtrend. And if you're a Euro bull and you bought it through the 20 here, look at it provides support. Three touches, another touch, just keep bouncing off the 20. You only get one brief penetration and back through. Okay, just find it a very useful tool. Regular viewers know that, I'm sure. Um, in terms of downside potential, this one would come down quite nicely. But I've got two targets. One I can draw in, which is there, which is 85, which is a monthly level. But I'm going for much lower than that. I'm going, uh, sorry, for um, 80. So literally all the way down here. So 85, then 80. Look at the monthly chart yourself and you'll see why I'm seeing those these two levels. Um, in terms of where we are now, uh, my own view is you've got resistance here because it's a round number effectively. So basically we come down and you get a big push up through the level. What you've got effectively is after we call this 20 day moving average, try and find support and can't through a couple of tails, try and get through the round number, but they fail or they failed so far. So yeah, round up, that's your first level of resistance in my view. You got a minor level there. So I need to get that line straight. Body and then tail. I mean, that's the minor level, that's the major level. In terms of a stop, where would you have your stop? Uh, my own view is you want it behind the 20 day moving average. 20 day moving average will snake down if price action obviously drops. But um, if it drops the level I'm just going to give you, the 20 day moving average should be just behind that level there, that red tail, just clear of that red tail. So first level there, second level there. Where would you sell if you wanted to come in fresh? through there. So you want to see that tail get taken out decisively, get below the 89 level and then see if she runs. So just wait for price action to bring you on the break lower. Obviously it bounces, you can always reassess, but uh, the way I see it, break lower down to here, then down to 80. In terms of um, the British pound, there's plenty of pairs that good risk to reward trades. I've covered three here. Also like GBP AUD, GBP NZD, long. And I do like it that the pound is volatile. Um, I like it that the pound is so oversold because that skews the risk to reward. Um, yeah, no problem in trading volatile pairs. I think that's what we want as Forex traders. And yeah, if we see the pound fall across the board, we just reassess and maybe pick up the pound at lower levels, as I think I said earlier on. So um, we'll see what happens with the pound, but uh, I think uh, these three are good risk reward trades. There's plenty of others. Yeah, we'll see how we go um, and we'll update these pairs in, in a future video or in our weekly Forex forecast. But that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me as usual. Take care and have a good day.